Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Peter. Uh, this is my vlog and today I want to talk to you about some pretty scary stuff that I've discovered. I'm not really sure how to start this. Uh, we'll, today we'll talk about this particular documentary, how it relates to a study from the 1970s and some of the scary other things that seem to be correlating to our population uh, growth and decline. So uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about this. Okay, so last week I watched a documentary by the name of uh, Birth Gap. It was made by Stephen Shaw uh, and it is about two years old. That was when the first part was released. Parts two and three have already been released uh, earlier this year, but I haven't seen them. Uh, and essentially the premise of this documentary is um, the, that Stephen goes around and talking to people uh, about uh, fertility, about population decline, in particular about the countries where it is really really significant and that is in uh, Japan in South Korea uh, and he also talks about the US and Europe and other countries and one of the main takeaways from it is that the general fertility rate isn't really going down in the sense that people aren't having less children but more people are having no children so that's a, a dramatic increase so that was the key takeaway from this and I, I watched it and it kind of triggered a few things in my head and I, I started digging into the idea of population decline and I started reading up and actually reading certain uh, articles and studies and some of the correlating factors are pretty frightening. The next part, the, the kind of the, the next sort of aspect of this whole uh, population decline problem goes back to another study that was done in the 70s and it was interestingly called Death Squared. It's a, it's a pretty ominous name and it has this kind of like quasi-religious introduction and it talks about the idea of behind the actual study and it was to take a mouse population and remove the, the problems associated with populations uh, that populations are faced uh, in general so by religious I mean he the author uh, John Calhoun, Calhoun <laughs> of that paper he said he talks about the four horsemen of the apocalypse now we have the sword which is war uh, and uh, infighting between populations we have uh, pestilence uh, disease uh, and we have famine, and that's poverty, and then we have uh, the last one, <sighs> predation. So predation is the, you know, animals or whatever, a third ex external predator that might impact a population. And what he did is he created an experiment, a uh, mouse utopia, that basically removed all of these problems. Like there was no external predator, uh, there was uh, all the food that they wanted, there was a lot of space, uh, an incredible amount of space for the... Uh, mice to go uh, live in and explore in and uh, there was uh, uh, there was no disease so he had the healthiest uh, mice uh, used in this experiment to reproduce there was no external kind of diseases introduced to the space they didn't get sick and so with all those factors removed what w the idea was well, what, what would uh, what would be the what would be the outcome and essentially what happened is with these uh, problems removed the population would grow and it would get to a point where all of the, the best uh, spaces where you could organize social structures, once they were filled up, once all the uh, highly desi desirable places were filled up, uh, and the population continued to evolve, uh, it reaches a peak and then starts declining and never recovers again. And so you may think, okay, well, that's mice, that's in this self-contained area. And I thought, okay, well, you know, there, there isn't really an issue, but this is where we get into the correlating factors that really, you know, you flashed a light bulb in my head and, and, and started really freaking me out, so to speak. Uh, so, so the correlating factors, right? What was it that really flashed my light bulb was this one line that kind of got me thinking, well, these kind of things are happening in the human population and the line you can see here uh, is that there were autistic like behaviors right and uh, and you look at a lot of the news from the you know from the earlier part of this century and there was a big hoo-ha about the increase of uh, autistic uh, behavior in children 
and in particular men. And then the other thing, the other correlating factor was the breakdown of social structure, right? So he makes a note in the study that the key problems associated with these mice population declines are the breakdown of social structures. And so I kind of had, did a quick look and I, I noticed one thing was that there are continued studies about autistic uh, behavior in children and they are continuing to rise. So this wasn't an early 20th, uh, 20th century problem, right? Not 21st century problem. This is still continuing. So we're seeing more and more children as a percentage of the population be classified as autistic. The other one was the increase in single parent families. So another indicator of social breakdown. Another indicator was the way that people met. So there was a, a number of studies and recently uh, seen of how people met and you can see a dramatic increase, really, really dramatic increase of the number of people that are meeting online. They're not meeting through friends. They're not meeting through university work. All of these other elements are declining, but online is, is uh, growing really, really quickly. So the social structures that bind people together are. Uh, uh, seem to be falling apart. Uh, the family unit, there are less people staying married, the people having children later, so, and the, the, the rate of divorce is greater for people that have multiple partners. So I don't know what this means exactly. I'm just stating the statistical information that I've discovered. So these correlating factors can be seen as a breakdown of so social structure, right? They can be uh, based on what we were previously seeing when population grew. People were staying married, they had kids, they had uh, more people had children in general. The, the, the crazy one, the thing that really got me was the autistic behaviors of the mice. And so what, what happens is that as that happens, the, the, the amount of energy the high, uh, the effective males would have to put in to uh, maintain their their uh, position in the social structure was increasing with more and more uh, males uh, becoming aggressive in this one single pool down the bottom of uh, the, the experiment. There were more and more men that, that just weren't having any kind of interactions with other females. And, you know, you might say, well, there's an anecdotal evidence. There are people talking about men going their own way and there are less men I integrated in a, in a family unit. And perhaps that's the case that's happening with us uh, now at the moment. I, I, I don't know. I couldn't find any direct evidence or studies looking at men uh, moving away from uh, the social nor social elements. But the, there are studies that I found that correlated autistic behavior with uh, lack of female companionship and family structure. So people that are autistic are less likely to have children because they can't build the social bonds. It's not guaranteed that you won't, but it increases your chance of being uh, childless. So. These correlating factors that I found, these studies that I found, and I kind of looked at the way that this experiment was done and what are we doing as a human species that also fits in to removing these problems that were associated with the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the four primary problems that populations face to, to uh, prevent them from growing. So, you know, swords, military conflicts. You, you may hear a lot of news about military conflicts, but in general, war is a very is very limited in context of what it was a hundred years ago. In the last hundred years, we have seen a decrease overall military deaths in the last hundred years as a general rule. World War II saw millions and millions of deaths. There's nothing that's even, even scraped the surface of that since. Even nothing's really scraped the surface of what happened in Vietnam in, in the Vietnam War, which was the largest semi-global conflict. Uh, <clears throat> Iraq, the, the other conflicts seem to have a lot of news, but there isn't so much uh, in terms of civilian and human deaths associated with it. And with the more interconnect interconnected aspects of our society, we're going to see less and less military conflicts like that. The other one is disease. Obviously, where humanity and human civilization is in dramatically increasing its ability to heal all kinds of uh, problems, like from cancer to vir viral infections. There are new technologies coming out all the time. So, you know, since the invention of the antibiotic uh, and other really critical uh, medical technologies, we have seen a dramatic increase in human populations because we haven't had that problem of, you know, pestilence. Uh, famine. 
poverty has decreased dramatically in China, other countries, uh, that element of limiting population is pretty much, it's not holding back population growth, not even in sub-Saharan Africa, in most countries of the world there is not as much poverty as you m may be uh, thought to believe, thought to believe. So poverty is uh, dropping. So predation, even if an asteroid was to come and, and try and hit our planet, we would have the tools to avoid it in terms of other animals. There is no other animal that predates us uh, in terms of humanity being an apex uh, species. And so with these things all here on this planet, all of the most desirable places have been taken up. And if we go again into the study of the mouse populations, we find that a critical aspect that, can, that damages the mice as they're growing is the excess social interaction between other mice in con condensed spaces. Now, we, the study isn't clear as to why that happens. It could be an overwhelming of the biological systems associated with developing bonds, possibly. We don't... It's not clear. I haven't been able to find anything. If there is something, maybe there is a coral, there is some study that talks about why that's happening. But that's what causes what what the what the suggested cause of these uh, breakdown of social structures is. Whether that also is an effect of humans, possibly, but it seems like there are correlating factors that seem to match up with the increase of population in these mass populations to the human population. So that's, that's really terrifying that we're seeing these correlating factors. And so, what next? What can we do about it? But I don't know. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that is suggested in the, the papers that, um, the, the Death Squared paper, was that immigration is an important aspect of moving on from a place where you need to uh, you need to continue your population growth. And so the only two suggestions here are to go to the moon or to go to Mars, Venus, and uh, terraform them. Uh, <laughs> the problem is, is that if we don't do that soon enough, then it's possible that our population will not be able to continue growing. And the reason I'm saying that is because the, in these mouse populations, the, the young that were brought up in these... Uh, in the mouse population, where when they were put into an open area with breeding mice, where ev nothing had reached this kind of uh, saturation point, breaking point from the population. But these other mice didn't reproduce and didn't interact in social ways that would be conductive to, to reproducing. So if, even if we may possibly take people to Mars, the Moon, Venus, would we still have the same problem where people just weren't having children? I don't know, but it's pretty scary, it's pretty freaky to think that in, say, 40 years or 60 years, I'm going to still be around in 40 years, but the population of China and India will have collapsed. Europe will be completely collapsed. And what's, what does that mean for us if the trends continue as they are? It's pretty scary. I don't know what to do. I mean, it seems like... People are starting to talk about it, but no one has any idea what to do about it. Do we create humans in artificial womb vats and that's our solution? I don't know. Possibly. Who knows? So that's me for today. <clears throat> and it's something to think about. Something for me to think about. I've been thinking about it all week and decided to put a video together about it. Guys, I hope to be back next week with a more optimistic video about a different subject, but yeah, this one hit me pretty hard. So anyway, thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of it, and I hope you guys learned something. If you did like this, please like the video. Please subscribe. Uh, I'm going to continue sharing info with you over the next coming weeks and years. Who knows? Okay, guys, see ya. Bye.